we've been married for 17 years, 15 of the best years of my life, right? <laughs> and, and so uh, we've done a part one already where we went in what it was like to create a vision for our marriage and what it was like to learn from those couples that had amazing marriages and, and seek their advice and this magical thing called the do-over. I really want to start looking at looking forward to something and creating date nights and certain rhythms and, and certain philosophies that you could adopt and how you can learn to be even more romantic and, and take it to the next level. And so this is part two in a series of legacy in living in extraordinary relationships and investing in your marriage. Because at first, right. like, honestly, when you're kind of in a slump in your relationship, sometimes you're like, uh, like you don't, cause you feel like you almost don't know the person anymore. So it's like, sometimes you need like a little startup or whatever. Drink some Prosecco. If you yeah. drink, Prosecco little, is always a good out. one to get the conversation now, going for now, us. Guys, let me just give you this. Okay. So girls like, you know, obviously to feel safe and they like that beta portion, but for date night, they love the alpha. You don't tell them where you're going. You just go, you just lead, you just plan. You just take charge. You, just surpri- you take charge and it's sexy. So, it so is. like you, you definitely like that. So I own that now. Here's my secrets. All right, here's the secrets. You don't have to be romantic. You don't have to be born that way or think that way to be romantic. So all you have to do is be able to tolerate a few movies. Now, I like, I'm I'm a romantic. I'm I'm a hopeless romantic. So I like some of these movies. Like we've seen Notting Hill a lot. We've seen About Time a bunch of times. I think I've only watched The Notebook once. So thank thank you for that. It makes um, me cry too hard. I, I can't watch, watch that it too often. But I, you know, what other ones do we watch? American President, because that was something we watched on our first date, and it wasn't even an official date where <laughs> yeah. we just kind of like, oh, wait, yeah, just date. like dates, like, just shows that are that kind of bring but you together. Watch these shows that are romantic comedies or romantic shows, and then just steal the ideas. <laughs> romantic. So in about time, they watch an outdoor movie. So here at the cabin, I bought a 17 foot. Oh my God. And we totally and we love it. We watch movies. it with our kids. It's right? so fun. They went into dining in the dark. So what did I do? Yeah, I went to I Vegas. I took you to dining in the dark, right? Like uh-huh. I saw that from there. So there's, there's a lot of ideas you can get, especially, you know, if your girl's like get, holding your hand tighter during that part or cuddling up to you, you're like, Oh, or like, cool or like, idea. what does she love to do? Does she like to hike through the woods? Is that romantic? Or does she like want to competitively play a sport with you? Right, like, like, what I, does she want to do? I, I, I have this list right here in front of me on my iPad. So these are just like all sorts of ideas that are. For, yeah, Garrett is for constantly capturing if yeah, he sees it in a movie or a friend talks about it. To a community garden or get a Christmas ornament together because you love those. A picnic. We love right? cooking together. Pillow talk and wine on the couch. A cooking class. A or even cooking in your kitchen. Cooking in your kitchen. We've a done drive that. Drive down the canyon. You know, hiking or snowshoeing. Poker with the twist. Guess what the twist is? Oh, yeah, can't really remember. Shocking. Can't believe it. <laughs> Hot air <laughs> balloon ride. Helicopter tour. Mm? Haven't done um, that. Um, Go for a ride in the can. But the point is here. Champagne celebrate. But it's just like you didn't want me to go. I didn't want to have you something well, I had what to do plan. You want to do tonight? Like I always had it planned. Yeah. And I know you love concerts. Yeah. I know you love comedy. Mm-hmm. Not always seeing my comedy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but comedy, you know, I know that you love, you know, if we're t- if, obviously if we're traveling, going to something like Broadway or to a play or if something comes in. So I call it my three C's, right? That I call it cinema. Sounds so fancy, but comedy, concerts, and cinema. Those yeah. are some go-tos, but we also have our favorite restaurants you know, just the other night, I was dragging, but I knew it was date night. So what do we do? We got our e-bikes. We got our e-bikes, we and we drove down out, to sushi. We went and had some sushi. Yeah, that was super Rode fun. our bike back, right? Got yeah. some Jamba juice. Like, just- But I think the point is, is like, so Garrett is constantly capturing ideas. If, he, if a friend tells him about it, he sees an ad for it. He sees it on TV. Like, that would be fun. He literally just keeps a note in his phone. And for me, uh, this especially was when we began this, our kids were quite young. And it was like, I felt like... All I did was plan things, plan things, plan things. I was always in charge of what was happening with our family so and I stuff. You. And so for us at that point, and it's just kind of carried on because he's been really good at it. But honestly, is Garrett would plan the entire thing. All I had to do was take a shower and get ready. And you maybe not even totally shower, shower but always? like, like look like I took a shower yeah, and then get ready right. and right. go out. And honestly, that made such a difference because I, re- you remember why you fell in love with each other and you end up flirting and teasing each other. And it just gets to be really fun. And it's almost, it's like you're dating again. And then you come home and, and real life begins. And I know some people kind of make these rules. I don't talk about my kids or I don't, don't talk about all those things when you're 
when you're sitting at date night, we don't really have rules, but I found like at first, honestly, we talked about our kids and work more often, but then once you get in the routine of date night and you have your, and you have your meeting with your spouse during the week or whatever, to kind of cover all that crap, when you actually get out on a date, you, you just talk about the things you're interested in and the things that are going on and you end up laughing so much more. Bought books like a thousand and one ways to be romantic. I, I, you know, I just invested in it. So that's part of it, you know, because in business I'm reading books um, w- from a mentor standpoint, we hired Dino Watt, as we mentioned his name before, Yeah, you know, so we're, we're saying let's have regular meetings around this. And then we did the weekly meeting. The weekly meeting is kind of magical because if we don't do a weekly meeting, then you don't know when you can talk about certain things. And now we can talk business during that, which preserves time to be more, ra- more romantic. So part of it was I looked in business, business that have vision. So I said, I'm going to create a vision as a husband to be a premier romantic and an extraordinary husband. So now all of a sudden I had a vision and I started doing much more romantic things. Like when it was our 11 year anniversary, I got that quartet. We invited 10 couples. We had them say, what's your best, you know, marriage advice. We watched our wedding video. We had a dinner. We did some dancing. You know, that was a, that was a pretty epic night because that's what a premier romantic would do. And I remember sending that to John and Missy and David and Nicole and Pat and Lori. And they're like, Oh, casting out, look at this look at our little boy growing up. Right. Like, cause I learned from them. And then I also had friends that were going through a toxic uh, divorce and a toxic marriage when we weren't in a good spot. I, I took a break from them during that time. I was like, yeah. I want to be, I really right think mindset. part of it is surrounding yourself with couples that you can be yourself around. So like if we're with our friends, like Mike and Linda, like if, if, uh, if, if I'm annoyed with him or something, I don't have to pretend like, Oh my God, everything's fantastic. Like people that you can really be your friend around. And like, I can say what's really happening in our relationship and they're not sitting there going, Oh, they have a bad marriage because they had a disagreement. No, they know like that everybody disagrees and me and Garrett have a great marriage, but people that you can really be authentic with and people that you can, uh, really say what's going on and they can give you helpful advice. Their advice isn't like, Oh, forget it. Marriage sucks. Their advice is like, you know, but but Garrett's always doing things that are nice. Like I get that he messed up here or whatever, but like the big picture is he's awesome or whatever. Somebody who supports you and that also supports your spouse. Like, like I wouldn't ever want one of my friends to be like, yeah, I can't believe he did that. Or I can't believe that happened or whatever it is. Like I want to be around with somebody who is going to support our marriage. Who's going to be like, that sucks that that hurt your feelings or I see why you're upset and just listen to me, but not somebody who's going to bash Garrett or walk away from me being like, Oh, you know, thinking whatever about us. I think that our rules and structure have opted out too. Like early on, we had the, if I'm gone for more than four nights in a month and I take a day off during the week, or when it was hard to get you away from the kids when they're really small, it was like, okay, let's do 14 nights away per year, not consecutively, yeah. but overnight dates are critical. There's a lot more opportunity for romance and that kind of stuff. If you're away from the kids when they were younger, yeah, I absolutely agree. But if Romance you can't and sleep terrace is what they were back then. <laughs> but if you can't get away, like I think you do like what we did on date night. Like the, once the kids are tucked in, boom, it's like couple time. It's yeah, not but, but clean the house and do laundry. Date, oh, date. for sure. That's, that's if critical. you can do and it. When we said 14 nights, now it's more than that, but we didn't want to have be gone so much that you felt like we're neglecting the kids. But if we, by having a structure gave us opportunity to go do things that you might've again like oh, I don't want to leave the kids but it's yeah. good for the kids to miss you sometimes but if I know but if I know like okay it's 14 nights this isn't going to extend yeah. into being like forever like because what would happen is we usually went on like a vacation that was like yeah. five or six days and then we'd maybe have uh, a couple overnights somewhere some other time during the year kind of sprinkled yeah. out and how critical is it to have something on the books like right now like a trip that we're, looking forward, that we're to. looking forward to we yeah. got Guatemala that we're looking forward mm-hmm. to so there's With all, our kids it's stuff, like you're yeah. already experiencing that beforehand. You're already enjoying that. And I'm saying, what do you look forward to? A lot of times we're talking about it and oh yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's part of the experience is always having something to look forward to. Cause I think couples that stop dreaming about an awesome future and they get stuck in wishing it was like the past. That's a surefire way to end up divorced because then it's not about like enjoyment. People are fighting over money because they're not dreaming of the future because of the problems that they are structured in today. Right. Yeah. And what, and what I think Garrett means about like having something on a book on the books is we always have a trip. And if we don't have a trip, we have like something coming up like, Oh my gosh, that concert's coming in town. We're going to that in yeah. two months or, going to the cabin or, or yeah. Or like like we, it doesn't have to be something that you can look forward to before. Yeah. Just something that you have in your calendar, a night that you're going to spend together going out somewhere, or if it could be a trip, a trip or whatever it's going to be having something that you're always looking forward to. That's in your near future, you know, within six or eight months that you have that's like coming around the corner. So you're like, I'm so looking forward to like this night that me and him are going to just be together. Just the two of us. So the magic of the do over Mm -hmm. the 
rules and structure of how many nights we're going to be away from the kids. Yep. You know, always having something to look forward to. Yep. Um, having that weekly meeting to discuss all the business things and do check-ins, which on the check-in, my favorite question for sure is, how am I doing on a scale of one to 10? Yeah. Which this is the way it really works. A 10 <laughs> is I'm crushing it. A nine is really good. Something's bothering you, though. What we need to address. No, 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 no. Now, not a nine. Thing. A nine's like, no. well, you said one thing, you did one thing, or we didn't do enough of this. Yeah. You know? If I give him, like, like below an eight, he's like, what's going well, on? Well, an eight is there's a real issue. A seven <laughs> is a failure. A seven is like, it's a zero, but you don't want to It's a failure in your eyes, but not yeah, in mine. Seven, but eight, nine, it or ten It definitely means that we need to connect. Below with. seven is, I guess it's over. That's what I feel like. It's, it's done <laughs> I don't think at this I've point. ever given you that, but. Right. That's because that's, that's your scale. Yeah. Seven, eight, nine, ten is your Yeah, but scale. I really feel like part of the reason that we're able to give higher scores is because we are so mindful of our relationship. Yeah. So, so we have that meeting and, you know, if people go to wealthfactory.com forward slash marriage, there's actually interviews with John and John and us, uh, Dino and us, which are people that we've mm -hmm. talked about. There's the speech I gave at Mastermind yeah, Talks, but Genius also Network, isn't and the agenda. The agenda. The agenda is there. Now, that agenda is overwhelming because it's really our full year agenda. We only do parts of the agenda in our weekly meetings, and they're not even weekly anymore. Um, and look, I'll tell you, the first remember the first weekly meetings there at my office? Like We had some... Yeah, they were Interesting, tough. Interesting, tough conversations. Yeah. Like, when was the last time we had a tough weekly meeting? I don't even know. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, but but initially I, I it was like, because I am like, th I do not want to be the naggy wife, and I refuse, regardless of how going crazy I am, I refuse to nag. So I don't. So the so the weekly meeting was like my saving grace because I didn't have to nag him. I just have to be like, hey, we need this. You said you were going to do this. I need it by Wednesday or this is happening. You need to put this on your calendar for the kids or whatever. It was like, boom, I got all that stuff out of the way at once. And I didn't have that like running in the back of my head. Like, like Garrett's at work being like, oh crap, I forgot to tell him we have this coming up or yeah. man, I really need this fixed. And it's bugging me all day long. It was like, boom, Monday's going to come. I have a note in my phone and I pull up and I go, oh, I need you to do this. And yeah. then it's done. There's no anger around it. There's nothing. I already know we're going to address it. And I also think like, one thing I figured out is what are some of your currencies, right? Yeah. So you like handwritten cards. Yeah. So I do a lot of handwritten cards because date night starts before the date. Yeah. During the day, text messages, a card or something like that. Yeah. Or right? funny sticky notes or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like yeah those yeah. funny sticky yeah, notes. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, llama love and stuff like, what was it like? Yeah. Yeah. And then you kind of write on them. Yeah. But just yeah, like, yeah. just like a way to kind of connect before. Yeah. And you can create systems and structures to kind of have that called forward more. So it's not like a brand new card every time out, I order a few at a time and yeah. stick them in certain places. And then like maybe before a trip, I'll pull it out of my backpack and write it for you and leave it yeah. for you. I, I review a book that I read that's been instrumental in our relationship at least once a year, have yeah. it even on my Kindle. So I might look at it over a flight to re remind me of a few things. And I, I think of us as dating. Like I want to flirt and joke around and be, yeah. a, uh, you know, like what would our be kids are fun? constantly horrified at our flirting. I mean, They're always like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. He'll grab my butt and my things. son thinks it's hysterical or he'll or whatever. Like, like we have that going on all the time in our house. And I think it's really good for my kids to see like how a relationship actually unfolds and how it's maintained. And we really do that. Like, I feel like so many parents are like, oh, they don't want to kiss in front of their kids or they don't want to whatever. And if and, that's your yeah. style, that's your thing. But but for us, that's not our style. So we'd yeah. actually be one kind of like. One of our family like, rules is to hug and kiss to greet and say goodbye. Yeah. And it's I just feel like for us, it's a really natural thing. And for us to try to like hide that or hold that back would actually be like a wall between us. And so um, we really try to live our relationship out in front of our kids as much as we can. Yeah. And there was a time when they were really young. We actually had a, a date night place that we also had clients stay, which was hilarious because I remember I came home early from San Francisco uh, on a trip and I, I painted the wall an uh, accent wall red and I put all these candles in oh, the room at the apartment. Yeah. At the apartment. And then one of my clients, <laughs> they wouldn't stay in the room because they're like, well, <laughs> this seems about, like a romance like room. A, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sex yeah, there's just, here, so. yeah. There's just candles <laughs> yeah. and, and it was just to create, but, but then the other room in there was just the kid's room. So I had like SpongeBob or something. So yeah, like a big old there. car. They drive and we had around other in. clients that wore robes <laughs> came out in your robe. <laughs> yeah. Took pictures. <laughs> took pictures. So yeah. 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 Uh, yeah and we don't, we don't, even have that place anymore we got the cabin that we love but well we don't really need it now that we yeah, can you, leave the kids and where yeah. we have more time because our kids are more independent but but yeah so i think that you know we've, we've gone over quite a bit around this uh from the do-over to the structure to the something to look forward to to the meeting to having a vision to 
capturing ideas. I know a lot. Like yeah. when I mentioned the meeting, uh, a lot of people go, that's crazy. You guys have like a business meeting for your marriage. Like a lot of friends are kind of like, that, that seems insane or unnatural. Next, and when honestly, when he, it. when he wanted me to start doing it, I was like, this seems crazy. We're going to have like a meeting around our marriage. But honestly, it is like the best thing we did to just clear the air and get everything all taken care of. And, and it became so normal and just, I don't know. Like, I know that kind of seems strange maybe to some people, but it really is a game changer in my mind for me who carries things around in my head and they just run. Right. And then uh, that way we're not talking about that stuff. Like we're not talking about our finances on date night. We're not talking yeah, about or over my, dinner my or... schedule for business, or we're not talking about the schedule for the kids. We've kind of created that space that, you know, there's a, a avenue to share it. But at the same time, now we can just go and have fun. Yeah. And you know, like what's coming up. I know what trips are Garrett's going on or he knows yeah. that something's coming up with the kids. It's not like he's like, wait, I didn't know that Roman had a play tonight or I didn't know this was happening or whatever. And, Cause that's already been mapped out months ahead. So read some books, be around people. I, I always ask friends to like what their best practices are. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Some friends you regret asking that. Yeah. Right. You ask a question, you immediately question the friendship and they answer <laughs> it. But uh, I've gotten a lot of the, you know, once again, the romance ideas that way. Um, so everything from simple to sophisticated, everything from elegant and easy to, you know, a little bit more involved. Like the other night we heard there was a, a jazz festival. It was free and it was downtown. So I took you to that. Yeah. We just we took to the dinner. e-scooters and we right. rode on down to the jazz. I was nervous with you on the little scooter. Yeah. You know? Rightfully so. The Not first time super. I took you, it was raining. It's amazing that you're still alive. Candidly. I know. Just I know. I'd had like a drink, like one drink. And he was like, are you sure you can drive the scooter? <laughs> <laughs> so look, uh, this is some of our best stories and how you create a legacy and how you live, how you enhance your quality of life, how you invest in your most important <clears throat> relationships. And a marriage is one of those most critical relationships. So whether you're dating, whether you're married or whether you just want to have, uh, you know, a, a great relationship with someone, I think that these are some good insights. Hopefully you apply at least one of these things and uh, adopt it or adapt it to your own lifestyle. But look, divorce is super expensive. You want to hurt your finances. You want to hurt your confidence. You want to get bitterness. I've seen a lot of that happen. Now I've seen a few conscious uncouplings, but for the most part, I've seen venomous divorces. I think so, it's painful either way. Yeah, And, and so I just think that one of the most rewarding things in my life was investing in our relationship. It's been just so amazing. And we've had so many killer, cool experiences. If I look at like the top five days of my life, like Carrie's in those top five days, our kids are in a lot of those top five days. And so this is, you know, something society is not going to reward you for is necessarily investing time in your family. But you know, what will be rewarded is your quality of life. You know, what will be rewarded is that you have someone to celebrate with, you have someone to enjoy life, you have someone to really open up to. And if you do these things, I think, you know, you're able to get even closer. So any final sentiments or thoughts from you? No, I mean, I think just take one or two of these things that you feel like could really enhance your life, like maybe an area in your relationship that you want to like up your game in a little bit and just implement it and don't make it like a forced thing. Just kind of let it roll How and just cool it'll Chicago evolve over too, time. We had like a second honeymoon when we did that whole go meet with all those couples. Yeah, I mean, do it. Oh, I, so I did want to say like surrounding yourself with uh, happy couples, not that their relationships have to be perfect because nobody's is, but you know, just surrounding yourself with happy couples, I think makes a big difference. People who are really striving to make their relationship the best that they can. All right. You've heard it here. 